Hello everybody. So it's time for me to move forward with this big painting of a bunch of birds. I usually spend a few minutes at the beginning of each painting session just by looking at the work and getting some ideas about the direction I'd like to go, especially in the beginning and at the end. But this process of observation will be a big part of the entire process all the way throughout. Up to now I've been sketching these birds over and over for months. I've taken a sketch from my sketchbook and redrawn them digitally and used those digital versions to play around with colors and move the birds around to get ideas for the layout. Once I got a layout that I liked, I transferred that concept to this canvas using a doodle grid, which you can see in one of my other videos. And now I'm ready for the next step. There are a few things I'm considering before moving forward mostly related to colors, layout, and visual techniques that I plan to use to get certain effects. I'll start out by referencing my original sketches and digital explorations. I like some of the colors I've tried when playing around with these concepts. I'm sure I will improvise along the way. I'll keep these references available so I can rely on them if I don't like where this is heading. Sometimes I take notes during these moments just so I can remember what I was thinking when I chose the colors I chose. It just so happens that I recently downloaded a digital coloring book by an artist, Jason Chambers. It's an image of some of his artwork. I'll post a link to his site in the description. I played around with it and I liked the color combinations that I was using. So I'm thinking I'll start with those hues in mind. Blues, reds, yellows, and tan. And also black, of course. I've also been using a collection of inspirational images to get ideas for my work. I got this idea from my buddy Tim Barron. I'll also add a link to his Instagram account in the description as well. And this is just a collection of images of other artists who've influenced me over the years or whose work I've admired and whose styles and techniques I'd like to incorporate into my own work. Of course, it's my intention to learn from them and to eventually make the work I create my own. This is just a bunch of random paint that I've collected over the years. I used to just buy colors randomly or get them as gifts from friends and I haven't been mixing paint as much as I used to but I'm just trying to use all this paint up. I'd love to have a whole bunch of the big bottles and jars of golden acrylics but it's pretty expensive so I need to sell some paintings first. I'm adding a little Liquitex slow dry gel into my paint to keep it active and workable for longer. Acrylic paint dries really fast, so this will slow that down a bit. It says not to add more than 25% to your paint, but of course I just eyeball it. So when I was looking through my inspiration book, I really liked the way that there are bits of color splashes that show up through a lot of graffiti art when it's layered on top of itself. And I've seen other artists using this effect in interesting ways. I definitely want to try to emulate that in this piece. So I'm definitely going to start by laying down some very bright colors. I'm also keeping in mind that acrylic paint dries 10 to 15 percent darker than when it's applied so I tend to paint with brighter colors anyway knowing that it will darken up a good bit. I can always paint over it, make it brighter or make it darker if I feel like it needs adjusting. I'm going to start out using a natural hair round brush and I could use a flat or synthetic brush or a palette knife. It really doesn't matter to me but I'm very comfortable with a round brush and uh, it's easy to get started with. And by the way, I'm listening to a mix of songs that I made on Spotify. I tend to listen to this same mix over and over again and just loop it while I'm painting. Uh, I often get distracted when listening to audiobooks, but I do give that a try from time to time. Music just feels easier and less distracting and helps me sort of get into a flow. So as I was recording this, I was thinking that it sounds like there's a lot of planning that's going into this. And and maybe there is, but I usually don't think about it this much. While I'm painting, I am going back and forth between being thoughtful about what I'm doing, but I'm also painting very intuitively and just letting myself go. I'm aware that most of the paint that I'm putting down will probably get covered up anyway. So I just want to establish some bright colors that might peek through at the end. And if I'm happy with a particular color, then I'll improvise and start using it on different sections of the painting. I 
decided to switch to a small palette knife because yellow sometimes goes on really, well most times goes on really thin. And I want to build up some thick patches fairly quickly and I, I like the straight lines that I get uh, with the palette knife. It doesn't mix with the underlying paint as much as when you're painting with a brush wet into wet. And here I'm just going to cover up some of the first brighter colors to try to leave a little bit showing through like I mentioned before. I keep coming back to just thinking I want to get some of these bright colors on as flat as possible. After the first pass at blocking in the brighter colors, this is where it stands. So I'll take a minute just to look at it and see how I feel about where I'm, where I'm at. So I've decided I'm going to mix up some lighter, more muted colors. Same hues, blues, reds, yellow, but just less saturated and toned down. I'm going to cover up a lot of what I've done, but again, remembering to leave a few bits peeking through. So now as I move on to this next step, I'm going to work on the background some. And I'm using a fairly unconventional tool. This is a wooden spatula and I'm using it like a palette knife just to spread the paint on thick and to cover a lot of the canvas quickly. The paint also has the slow dry gel mixed in and I'm adding it first, planning to scratch into both the new color stripes on the bird as well as the background color to hopefully get some interesting mixing effects. Here I'm using a new tool, I've switched again. This is a big flat brush, and I think it's natural hair. It's a brush I've had for a long time. I chose it because the bristles are very coarse, and I want to create some big flat swatches of color, and I'm very happy to have some of the brush strokes. Again, I'm going for a variety of marks and texture. Since this paint has the slow dry gel, uh, sometimes the different colors start to mix together and blend on the canvas and I'm always experimenting with that too as I work. I'm also starting to add some color outside of the bird, just playing around. It's uh, very hard for me to stay in between the lines.
you watch my videos, you're going to see me scratching into the paint quite a bit. Oh my god, he's ruining it. I like to use the palette knife to scratch into the paint to create texture. A lot of artists use all sorts of tools to scratch into paint, including the back of their brushes. Hunt Slonum, whom I really admire as a painter, uses both sides of his brush pretty much all the time. I know other artists that use combs and all kinds of odd things. Later on, I'll be using the sharpened end of the chopstick. So whatever works for you, you'll see me do this a lot. So a few thoughts behind the scratching technique. The main thought here is that this is going to give the painting a distressed effect in a, in a good way. There's actually a more meaningful reason why I chose to add these scratches and why I choose to add them, especially on my bird paintings. I'm not going to go into the details with that, but I often hide little things in my artwork that have personal meaning and sometimes only things that I know about. I don't feel like it's something I need to share as it isn't essential conceptually to most of my work. The viewer doesn't need to know all these things. I'm aiming to create work that people can enjoy simply because it's visually interesting or aesthetically pleasing. The fact that there's meaning or deeper symbolism behind some of the imagery is just a bonus. I decided at this point that it felt too muted. So I'm going to add some of the brighter colors back. Not quite as much as in the beginning. I'll go back over the top including some orange and pink instead of red and some of the bright yellow and aqua. I don't have any slow dry gel in the blue black that I'm using for these lines. I'm alternating between painting and using the chopstick to scratch through it before it dries. I'm just adding in these lines and distressing them as I see fit. I may end up pushing the whole painting uh, in a completely different direction by the end, who knows. This whole process is about trying out new ideas, evaluating them, adjusting, and reevaluating. There's almost always a point where I pretty much hate how it's looking. But I've come to expect that and I just keep pushing right through. Next time when I pick this up, I'll take another moment to reflect and reevaluate where it is with fresh eyes. Then I'll likely start repeating this whole process. I'll choose some of the things that I like and I'll start to implement them in other areas of the painting. I'll likely jump around much more instead of concentrating on any one bird. So somehow I ended up losing uh, some footage. Um, it happens. And this is an image that shows uh, where the bird ended up at the end of the day. And I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I wish I would have had the rest of the footage, but you know, that's how it goes. I plan to keep on filming this one and release updates over the next few weeks till it's done. Hopefully we'll have a cool piece of art in the end. So if you like this work or this type of content and you feel compelled, please comment. Let me know what you think and also what you'd like to see. And for anyone who actually made it this far, really appreciate you watching. Thanks.